the night Mary died, um, she would have been trying to support another friend of hers who at, whose husband was trying to physically drag her um, out of the garden. He was hurting her, so Mary tried to stop that. And uh, he pushed Mary out of, the, out of the way and she fell to the ground and uh, she banged her head. So um, she died, she never regained consciousness. Up to that, uh, all the work, you know, all the awareness, it was, it was only when that happened that we realized that men do kill. You know, we hadn't seen it as, as being at that level before. So um, it was a shock. To, I mean, the whole community was in shock. Once is Too Much is an exhibition about violence against women. It was made by 17 women from the Family Resource Centre, St. Michael's Estate, in Shakur, in Dublin. For the last eight years, the Family Resource Centre, in collaboration with Women's Aid, have developed the first community-based response to the issue of violence against women in Ireland. Once is Too Much was part of the work undertaken on that journey. This is everybody's issue. You don't have to be a survival or uh, in a situation to want to speak out about this. Everybody should be speaking uh, out about this crime. When we were working with the women's groups, when we were raising women's issues, women started to come into us. They felt safe to, 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 to come to us and they'd bring us into the toilet and they'd show us their bruises. At the time, our support to them would have been, you know, um, being there for them, I suppose. And we would probably have said things, you know, like, why do you stay? You know, why don't you get out of the situation? It's so difficult for a woman that's in that situation to leave. And it is all about power and control and who actually holds the, the power and control. So it was like all retraining to us, maybe there was something that we could do. Do you know what I mean? And by broadening our minds, that maybe we can do something. Now, this is our fourth piece that we made in terms of a Rochelle who has come from Canada. An estimated 140,000 people saw the exhibition while it was on show at the museum between November 1997 and February 1998. Like, people look at this estate and it's been through the papers and whatever you'd want to call it, it's been run down and run down and run down over the last six years or maybe more. And I think the art, like I said, you can raise a lot of issues through art. If they see that art, they'll say, my God, St. Michael's estate does do some good work along with the family resource centre. The centre is based in the estate. It was founded by local people 13 years ago and works to support local women, children and men addressing issues which affect the community. The guiding principle in forming the centre is the process of community development. It is one of 80 projects in Ireland, core funded by the Department of Social, Community and Family Affairs Community Development Programme. Well, you see, I think community development is a big word on what people have always been doing and it's about fighting for human rights and it's about having the skills to, to, to get those human rights. So community development, you know, is a model uh, that's been named, say, in the last 20, 30 years maybe. It's another word, it's like instead of saying oppression, we say social exclusion. You know, like we lose the words to what it's really about. When people are poor, they're being oppressed. So if we're talking about community development, we're talking about achieving human rights. And those rights are the right to live, have the basic incomes uh, in, uh, in order to live, to have the proper housing where you're warm, where you're safe, 
to have education where you can participate at the level of anybody else in society, to have a healthcare system that ensures that when you're sick, that you, you are looked after. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what all our work is about. What did you go? The centre runs a creche for young children and an after-schools programme to help older children stay on at primary school. On a day-to-day -day basis, the centre works on tenant and estate management issues, which affect the community. The centre participates in a wide range of local, national and at times international forums, addressing issues such as drugs, poverty, racism and violence against women. There is an ongoing younger and older women's programme which offers people the space to come in and take part in local education initiatives. It was through the work of the older women's group that the need to address the issue of violence against women arose. It was through the, the programme in the centre and through um, the link with Women's Aid that we began to understand that it's not that easy. There, there are so many obstacles to get out of a situation. And um, <clears throat> then I, I think, um, our, not that the support changed, but we were able to look at it in a different way. We realised we can't do this all alone and also run a community development project. This has to be an integrated approach to the work. That meant that we needed to bring all the key workers in the area together for training to build their analysis and that we came from a unified approach on the issue of violence against women and that approach was coming from the issue of parent control. This model now has taken everybody, everybody in the community together and instead of a woman having to go to a hundred different places before she can get one uh, relevant bit of information, you know, uh, any, any of us now can say to this woman, oh, these are your options, this is what can be done. Um, we also have um, a, a, a centre which is called Hesit House, which actually grew out um, from the work at Femme Resource Centre through Joe Kennedy, uh, seeing the need for a counselling service. So we have a counselling service in this area as well. So we have become more and more aware of the nature of violence against women and of the needs of uh, women in that situation and the needs of their children. We've become very aware of that, and one of the pieces of that was around counselling. So we became more and more aware of the need for counselling that wasn't in a psychiatric model, that wasn't giving out tablets to people, uh, that had an analysis of women's position in society, and particularly of poverty as well, so analysis of women and class. We also saw the need for it to develop a centre that would take it away from the, the, the community development project uh, where she would have confidentiality, where she could get her options, where she could be accompanied to court. Uh, now that's taken a long time to get but we do have that in place now as a community. Just after we were after opening our exhibition in um, Kilmainham, this man actually threw his wife or his partner out the window and the people were absolutely appalled in the area, absolutely appalled. And they all got together as a community and marched up to that man's door. Now, I believe that wouldn't have happened. I honestly believe that wouldn't have happened unless there was a, the project the Family Resource Centre did, the people knew about it and people were saying, look, this is not on, this is not on. You know, your man since left the area. Once is Too Much was part of a cultural strategy to inform people about the issue. The Family Resource Centre has always placed importance on creative work in its programmes and since 1991 has developed a close working relationship with the Irish Museum of Modern Art, which is based in the area. 
That partnership, along with the Lord's Youth and Community Project, Sean McDermott Street, and artist Alva Murphy, produced Unspoken Truths in 1992. This was an exhibition by 32 Dublin women about their lives and experiences. Work on the Once is Too Much exhibition began in 1995 when a group of 17 women from the Family Resource Centre collaborated with Canadian artist Rochelle Rubenstein, who is on the museum's Artists' Work Programme. The focus of the collaboration was a fabric printing project on the issue of violence against women. During the period when we were making the blanket, a woman came along and uh, her child was in the museum um, doing another art workshop and she came in to look at the blanket and she said that's what's happening to me and immediately we knew that art had quite a powerful uh, role to play and that that blanket uh, was the beginning really of our exhibition Once Is Too Much. The women worked in collaboration with four artists, Rochelle Rubenstein, Joe Lee, Rona Henderson and Alva Murphy, to make the 11 multimedia artworks that appear in the exhibition. And at that particular stage, 18 women had been killed. We were, we were counting them at that stage. There was a group of 17 of us again working on that particular piece. And what we wanted then from that was to, in some way, break the silence. We all got to paint on this in all different colours. So it was like the shatter in a glass. We had eyes on it that went along, eyes and hands. And the eyes were about society. Uh, so that the eyes were saying, we're watching you, you know. Uh, we see this happening. And, and the hands is about this has to stop. We named it Beauty and the Beast because it is beautiful and also um, it has an eerie side to it as well. And also the fairy tale when, when you think you're going to get married and live happily ever after. Um, it doesn't always work out like that. A lot of time that's where um, a lot of the row starts. The dinner's not ready on time, one of the kids is crying at the dinner table. Um, we were trying to create a scene. Because it's an explosive situation basically and um, we decided because of that we would have the table in the shape of a bomb and we would have uh, underneath it we had the wires coming from one end of the table up to um, the top where he was in control and we had his seat we made his seat into a, a throne and the wires were there between his feet so that he could set it off at any time but what we wanted to do with the bomb was we wanted to say it's not the bomb, it's the person who explodes the bomb off, that he is the person that's in control, not the bomb. The chandelier was made up of um, objects that you would find around the house, things that were found that were used on women, um, you know, like brushes and knives and uh, all the things that are used to abuse women. And the drawer on the outside is wooden and it's the hard shell of our life. And on the inside, it's, um, it's, it's velvet. And there are little things in there that belong to her in her life. And with it, there's um, a poem. And it's about coming to my, my sacred space because this is where I live. I live in my head. Um, I, I saw above the parts of my life that are, are woeful. And then there are parts within that poem uh, that talk about, you know, you, you even say, I like the beatings, but you don't understand the fear because I've lived with him. And I'll go when I'm ready. And you see, people ask, um, why does she stay? And they never ask, why doesn't he, why does he do it? Why do men beat women?
Well, I made one little piece on the child and another girl with me, Phyllis. And it was uh, an experience that my sister went through and I'd seen the child and that's how it, I could bring her out. I think there's help out there for people and don't be afraid to seek help. The women call it the stations of the cross, um, but it is like the stations of, say, leaving or, or being in a situation where he does control either the checkbook or the doll, or he goes with you with your pram to the post office to get your, your money. Um, in the situation of friends, it's okay to have friends who like him, but it isn't okay to have friends who might say to you, what are you doing there? Because he needs to isolate you from that. In terms of the kind of clause, that's right, that's terribly intimate in terms of to have that kind of control over your body and your mind. And then there's the mind control. And then we swing around and it's about, um, she's not hiding it anymore. Um, she's taken back her own control. And this is where she's beginning uh, through either the support of friends, through the support of family, through the support of community, to begin to take back her power. takes over your life. So I just presume that I'd go to school. The video installation is made in three parts. This work is built around a series of audio interviews with women who have experienced male violence in their lives. This was combined with original music, media reports, slides of Dublin streetscapes and people, and studio-based video work. But happiness was something I would have wished for and expected. and live happily ever after with the husband taking care of me. I'd finished the... He loves me, he loves me not, flips the familiar folk rhyme where women reflect on their early expectations for romance, set against the reality of abusive relationships. Open Season explores the patterns of violence common in the lives of abused women and sets this against media reporting of the issue. Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing presents three separate women's stories about their abusive relationships with their partners. At this period of the project, 30 women had been killed. But we came up, we said, well, what are the flowers of the dead? And we said, lilies. And then the, the whole idea then came up around glass shelves. And we left a, an end shelf, which was a glass empty shelf. And that the women who wanted, who were making the project, wanted to remember the women who were missing. But it's not only about the women who were missing, it's also about the next woman. So we used the Ben Aukery poem, just a line out of it that says, they tell me life is good, they tell me to live it gently. And it's really about that all those women were killed violently. And it's about putting the challenge out there. What's beautiful about it is that it's about keeping the women alive and fresh. And three days after the exhibition was opened, a woman called Margaret Costello, who was driving her taxi, uh, was murdered in Galway and I think that shook us terribly because we had to um, put the lily on the shelf and this was another woman and then since then there's been seven extra women killed. Mary was a woman first of all and I think that's very important to say because um, she always wanted her own identity as a woman. Um, she was 37 years of age when she died and she left two little girls, Emma and Victoria. Um, Mary was she, was, she was just a brilliant person. Um, everyone who met her loved her and uh, she, was, she was very intelligent, um, very funny. 
and uh, I was very privileged to have had her as a friend, best friend.